opportunity to be here today. I am uh, Dan Carlson. I am a pastor, and I am a, uh, going to tell a few things about myself as we, we start this little endeavor, this little venture, this little journey of, uh, of uh, media stuff that I'm not, I'm not used to here. But I'm happy to be here and to share some thoughts and, uh, about what I am, who I am, what I do, um, and why I do it. I want to start with that a little bit. Who I am? I am a pastor. I'm a Lutheran pastor. Um, uh, I'm also a uh, retired police chief. I was a police officer in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, down in the, in the metro area in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and I was a uh, pastor, or I was a police officer for 25 years. Retired as a chief 12 years ago and became a pastor. My life since that time has become: I am a spiritual health care provider. Um, in the old days, when I was a cop, I was a physical fitness trainer. I took a training once, and the instructor told me before I could do anything physical fitness training, before I could influence and help people in their physical fitness health, that I had to th consider mental health and spiritual health along with it. And it planted the seed in my head that there needs to be spiritual health care providers out there. And who is that? Those are pastors. And that was about 20, 25 years ago now, since I've been retired for 12 years. And I, uh, so I kind of took that upon myself. That was my simply stated, my call from God to, to pursue that spiritual health care per, uh, perspective on law enforcement and, and police officers. Since that time, I started a ministry, Public Safety Ministries, and I've been a chaplain with, with uh, many organizations throughout Minnesota for the last 12 years. Dozens of agencies have brought me on to do chaplaincy programs with their agencies and help them build programs. And as I was doing that, I was trying to define who I was and where I was working as a pastor. Although I'm called to a church, I am deployed to public safety ministries, and I'm a missional pastor working in the streets of Minnesota is how I consider myself. Back when I was about to retire as a police officer, I was the chief of the department, and we had an extremely tragic crash that happened in Eden Prairie. On Highway 494, the Ring, the ring uh, Interstate around the metro area, um, I was working that night. I was, it was a weekend, it was a holiday weekend night, Friday. I was working, I was the shift commander on duty. Tragic crash, multiple car crash, multiple, multiple deaths in the, in the crash. It was, it was a really horrible situation. Um, as we were at that situation, all the cops, fire, police, EMS were showing up and there were literally dozens of people involved in that, in that very chaotic situation. After the crash was over, after it, we had cleared the freeway, um, the fire chief and I brought together all the people involved, a couple dozen people were there, just to do a little debriefing, not a debriefing as much as a defusing, and just to help people process what they had just gone through, just sharing a few of the details of the incident. And as we're going through the incident, um, we asked if anybody else had anything to share. And at that time, Pastor Jack, my chaplain, our chaplain at the time of the, of the incident, he had been working the event throughout the evening, Pastor Jack should stood up. Pastor Jack said, there are two opposing forces in this world. And I'm thinking, where's Pastor Jack going with this thing? We got cops here. It's kind of just a debriefing thing. We don't need a sermon. What's, where's he going with this? I was a little concerned, the chief. And Pastor Jack stands up and says, there's two opposing forces in this world, order and chaos. And I thank God that you folks are here when those two things collide. And that's what I learned through my ministry. My ministry is working the streets, working with the police professionals, the, the fire professionals, the EMS professionals, because they are on that front line of helping picking up the pieces when those two things collide. Call it, call it good and bad, holy and evil, um, dark and light, order and chaos, whatever you want to call it, there is a conflict in our world, and it's very evident in the professions where I serve. So I am a spiritual care provider. That's what I do. And I'm sharing this message today with the people, the men of faith. They're talking about be bold, have endurance in that men of faith mission of being faithful in the world, in that chaotic place of the world where there's often conflict. And so I want to share a couple things I've learned with you over the past 35 years that I've been in the business and the last 12 years I've been as a pastor of what you can do to help build endurance, to help you better sustain yourself and those around you in this chaotic world. So I got three things, three exercises that I have learned that have been very valuable to me, and I've taught it to a lot of people, and I want to share it with you today. Number one, it's critical as a person of faith embedded in the world in the chaotic times to live your faith, to share your faith, but never impose your faith. That's the key that's got me to a place where I've been very accessible and very a lot of people utilize the services I provide and the services of chaplains and whole as because we kind of carry that message of living your faith, sharing your faith, without imposing your faith. This falls into that whole church-state relationship issue that 
is a real challenge to a lot of people bringing a pastor into a police department, but what about the separation of church and state, they'll say. And I'll say, it's not the focus of how we're different and how we're separated. They are two distinct entities, the church and the state, but those two entities come together way more than they're divided. So I talk about whose house are you in? That's how you kind of manage this thing. Are you in the church house or the state house? I am a church house employee working on the streets of the state house, so I have to respect that house that they're in. But the whole issue is here, and this is the, the simple part of it, is if you're going to do this thing, if you're going to be a faithful person in the world, live your faith. Loving people, caring for people, supporting people. And then to share your faith, people say, how do I share my faith without, without imposing? How do I share my faith without disrespecting and imposing myself on someone else? Simple answer. When they ask you to, or maybe a little more passively, when they allow you to. That's the thing that this whole thing about ministering in the world, it takes time. It's all about relationships. You have to respect the relationship with you're in, not impose yourself, but live your faith and share your faith if they ask you to or allow you to. That's number one. The second thing is I'm trying to figure out where is my theological foundation. I haven't read any scripture here today because I'm in the world um, and, I, and I do share scripture with people down the road when they ask me to, and I do go down that road, but I was trying to think, what is the foundation of my ministry and the ministry that police chaplains and fire chaplains and EMS chaplains do? What is the foundation of? What is the theological foundation, the religious foundation? Well, I figure maybe I'll start with the Ten Commandments. There's ten things that we're supposed to do and things that we're not supposed to do. That's a lot for us to handle sometimes, so I figured, okay, maybe we need to reduce that, and I found some great scripture. What's the greatest commandment? To love God, love your neighbors as yourself. It's longer than that, but that's where I always narrow it down to. Loving your God and, and your neighbors as, your, as yourself. So I'm talking to one of my board minister, or, uh, members with my ministry. I'm saying, yep, I'm kind of distilling this down. That's a term my marketing guy said, distill your th mission down to something really simple. So it's love God, love neighbor as yourself. So I put the 10, I narrowed them down to one. He says, that's a great deal, he says, but I got a little more of a challenge. I got 613 commandments that I got to narrow it down to. He's a Jewish man, he's a strong man of faith, and he, so he's narrowing it down, he's taking those 613 and he's trying to distill it down to one commandment. And that's the beauty that I've learned, no matter what your faith tradition is, we can all distill that down. If we want to bring it to, down to one solid thing, it's loving God. And then on top of that, loving your neighbor as yourself. So that's number two. Number two is love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. The third one is the one I want you to remember most here as we go into this thing. This is the one message that I have truly learned. It's about caring for people by caring about people. Okay, as I'm a new guy, as I'm a young guy, young guy when I retired, um, and I'm a, but I'm a really a young pastor, and I'm trying to figure out how to infiltrate this profession. I had the benefit of, I was inside this profession. I was inside the doors of the police departments. I was inside the doors of the chief's offices and the fire chief's offices. I was an insider and I stayed in there. But I'm in there and I'm thinking, how do I care for these people? So what do cops do? What do firefighters do? What do paramedics do? You hear stories about there's chaos running rampant. These people show up and they fix it. They calm it. They bring peace to the situation. They bring it under control. And then they move on to the next thing. Fixers, that's what these people I'm dealing with are. Who takes care of the fixers? Who takes care of the care providers? Usually nobody. You know why the biggest reason that no one takes care of them? Because they won't let them. You show up at a scene, you're feeling bad, they're gonna, you're going to show up at the scene, you're, how you doing? How you doing, officer? How you doing, firefighter? Um, fine, how are you? What are you doing? And then they'll turn it around and they'll start taking care of you. And I learned over these years... I didn't decide to do this, it was just imposed on me. I tried to take care of these people. I tried to care for them. And what I learned is the key to the whole situation is caring about them. I told you a few things about who I am, what I do, um, and why I do it at the beginning of the session. That is how I have learned to care about people and in turn care for people. I learned who they are, what they do, and why they do it. Who I am, I'm a care provider, used to be a cop, used to be a police chief. What do I do? Now I care for people. And why do I do it? It's a call from God. That's a real reduced message there. But that's when I sit with people. And, I, and so that's the key. I say, you want to move into a police department. You want to do s spiritual care to these officers and these firefighters and these medics. Show up. I always say, them, I say here's my kind of model. Show up, shut up, be available, be accessible, 
and care about them, learn who they are. That's one of the biggest challenges we have in this profession right now. There's a lot of chaos dumped on the public safety personnel because they're showing up to things when they're in chaos, and there's a lot of criticism, and there's a lot of chaos at those scenes. And those people are human beings too. They're suffering in their lives just as a lot of people are suffering in, 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 the, in the world lives. But they turn that off to come in and, and pay attention to the situation and help people and try and fix their situations. My deal is you sit down with them you, and you just pay attention to who they are. And the more you do that, the more you care about them, the caring for them takes place. One of the things when I was doing, this is a good example of how I would care for people and as I care for people, I've also learned the big deal is that God will be there to help me out with the deal. God will be there to help me, and God will fill the gaps. So I'm a, I, we had a situation in the metro area of Minneapolis. One of the departments had a pretty tragic shooting in their department. It was actually in their city hall where there was a shooting. The police chief of the, in, the, in the city was actually involved in the shooting as well. He was right there and involved in the whole situation. So there was a shooting that happened, it's tragic, and what happens when you get a shooting in a city hall? All over the news, dominates the news, um, so the, they're, they're being inundated with this, this situation. I'm at a point in my life where I wake up in the middle of the night. I wake up about 2 o'clock in the morning, things start going through my head, so I'm, sitting, I'm waking up one night when this thing had happened, I'm thinking, oh man, I haven't connected with Tim yet, reached out a couple times, but I haven't connected with the chief yet. You know what, I'm just going to call his office number. I'm not going to call his cell phone. I don't want to wake him up. I don't want to bother him with anything. So I called him up. I called his, his office phone just to leave a message, say, care about you, praying for you, thinking of you. So it rings a couple times, and all of a sudden he goes, this is Tim. Tim answers his phone. He's doing the same thing. He's up in the middle of the night. He's sitting in his office having some quiet time. So all of a sudden, Tim and I are talking. Well, I was just planning on leaving a message, Tim. Actually, I didn't want to talk to you because I'm inundated with stuff. I just wanted to care about you. I just want to let you know I was thinking of you, praying for you. And all of a sudden, we're having a conversation. Tim and I laugh about that all the time now. He says, yeah, I remember when you called me in the middle of the night? I said, yep, and I remember I didn't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to unload that thing so I could get back to sleep. And that's the beauty of caring about people rather than trying to care for them and trying to fix them. In that conversation, we connected real well, we shared some stuff, and we've had a long relationship beforehand, too, because I've been showing up and I'd known Tim for years and years as a cop and then as a chief as well. So that's the key to that is caring about people, which evolve into caring for people, and if there's any problems with how you're doing it, there's a lot of gaps involved in those situations. God will be there to fill those gaps. Um, so and that's the, those are the three points, and I'm just going to and to close on that, and I'm and I'm going to share, and then I'm going to share one last thought because I think I have a few minutes here to to, to uh, finish up my message. But here's the point: everybody in this room, everybody out there in video land, are spiritual health care providers, people of faith, people, men of faith is our target today, but it's all people, all people of faith, and we have to start caring for each other. And the way that we're going to care for each other is by caring about each other. And there's three ways to do that. Live in your faith, share in your faith without imposing your faith. The second one is loving God and loving neighbor as yourself. And the third is to care for people, like I said, by caring about people. And if there's any gaps in there, God's going to fill those gaps. I have one personal agenda thing I wanted to close things with here, too. There is so much trauma in the world, and there is so much noise, and there's so much in the media. I wanted to share one thought that everybody that's listening here, because one of the biggest conflicts we have that's publicized so much now is the conflict, conflict between police and community. It's getting a lot of press and a lot of presence. I am embedded for the last 12 years in police departments. I'm also embedded in the communities that those police departments serve. And I'm going to tell you the conflict is not nearly as bad as it is displayed in the world of noise. And my one plea to everybody is to take that one simple message. I, I want people to live and share their faith without posing it. I want people to, look, uh, to think about focusing on loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself, as, as Jesus always said. But I really want people on both sides, in the community and in the law enforcement profession, to come together in the common mission of caring about each other. If we spent a little more time sitting down, learning who our neighbors are, what they are, or, or what they do, 
and why they do it, we're going to find we, we, we should celebrate diversity and we should ce celebrate our similarities. We should not be all about us, but we should not be all about our neighbors. We should all be all about us collectively. If we all spend a little more time getting to know our neighbors, getting to know ourselves, here's a big one, folks, and I'm gonna, this is where I'm getting in the pulpit as a pastor, getting to know God, who God is in your life, what God is doing in your life, and why God is doing that in your life. And if you do those three things and then carry it over to yourself, who am I, what am I doing, why am I doing it, who's my neighbor, what are they doing, and why are they doing it? And if we put all that stuff together, the gaps will fill, then maybe everybody's going to have a little more patience with each other, maybe a little more understanding, and we can truly love each other by caring about each other. Thank you. Mm -hmm.